Hello, this is Peter Cunningham from Seraphim. This video is going to give you a brief introduction to the interactive decline analysis capabilities in future. As a starting point, I assume you've got a future model um, with wells defined and your, the historical data loaded. If you haven't got that, very briefly, you need to import the historicals either th through import historical data from database or import uh, production tables from Excel. And then having done that, you need to tell your current model to use that new specter as the source of its historical data, which is done through the following under file, edit settings for current model, and then you specify here under the specter for historical data, you can point to the right place. Okay, so assuming we've got that, the basic process is to select one or more wells for editing and then um, move to the decline tabs, it's select decline uh, a curve model, move to the decline tabs and adjust the lines to fit the historical data. Okay. As always, you can access all commands through the main menu, and the full way of doing it, so the most general way, is edit, edit well, select the appropriate numbers of wells, and uh, edit the wells one by well to, in order to get the decline uh, analysis going. Alternatively, another quick convenient way is in the well approval manager, select your list of wells, right click, edit selected wells. You'll then get the well dialog and down here you'll have the scroll buttons for swapping between the different wells. In this particular case we've got a um, our model has only got a single scenario, so there's a single set of properties so and a single um, uh, well potential curve. If you have uh, multiple scenarios, such as low, medium and high, then the same principles apply, but instead of defining one decline curve, you would be defining three separate decline curves, a low, medium and high, or, or indeed you could have a low and medium decline curve and you could take your high to be a uh, simulator output. Okay, so working with a single scenario, the first thing we need to do, having first of all, having checked here that, that yes, we have got historical data for this well, um, what Future does is it looks in the historical specter for uh, is for data with the same name as the, the wells got. Okay, we want to t tell uh, um, the well to use a, t a decline model, and this is done under type of production model here. Within the decline model, there are two options in terms of um, oil and water declines. The first option is essentially a single decline curve, which is essentially a, a constant gross liquid rate. Alternatively, one can have two decline curves. One, a decline curve in oil cut, in other words, an increase in, in, beer, in, in water cut, and then a, a second decline curve in oil rate. We'll start with the single uh, decline curve, so, so a, essentially a constant gross liquid rate. This is, is illustrated in the decline charts which are under the tab here. Now these decline charts, you start off with uh, one major and four minor ones. The Although you can rearrange this to, to, to um, as, as you uh, wish, clicking on these up arrows 
swaps that well to being the major one there. If you click on these arrows, the plot undocks and can go separately. And that's often, particularly if you've got a you know, couple of monitors, that's often a convenient way of doing things. And if you undock in this way, you can then edit uh, the the curve data manually if, if you so wish. So, for example, changing this, we see the change reflected in the oil rate versus cumulative. The start point, the the constant gross liquid rate, or rather, more specifically, the the gross liquid rate determined by rate and pressure constraints is illustrated in the decline chart using the maximum liquid rate under constraints and density. So if we put here this down to say 3000, again it'll reflect in, in the curve here. The layout of these things is preserved between uh, different um, each uh, calls within your set same session. So if we, let's say we move through a variety of different uh, wells and then OK, the next time we come to edit everything, the curves come back. If you want to reset everything or cancel what you're doing it's under cancel there are a number of options the default one is to simply ca cancel the current the edits on the last well that you're editing so if you've been editing and, and and quit the dialogue so if you've been editing say five wells and now you've moved on to the sixth one if you press cancel the main cancel button that'll just cancel the edits on the sixth well Another option is to uh, cancel the current edits but continue. That might be useful if, if the, the curves if start uh, shooting off. The auto scaling can sometimes take things out at, 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 to extremes. Um, the other op another option is to cancel all the edits from all the wells that you've been editing. And finally, the fourth one is to reset the, the layouts, and that would cancel all the, the layout thing and go back to the, the original. Okay, so here we've got a we've got a, a decline curve, and the basic idea is that you can move these points, these anchor points to adjust the curve to, to fit your, your data. There isn't any automatic scaling at the moment. And that is done by pressing with the left mouse and dragging the relevant point. So you go down there. If you right click, you've got some more options. If you choose the option move, move line, that's just as before but you can also apply that to a specific point so you can move move your anchor point to that point on the line if you choose the option move line you will see you will see that the mouse or should do just let me try it again the mouse will move to a hand and then you can translate the whole curve Like that. You often will want to focus in the, the detail and uh, to zoom in on, on it. But the, the models start with automatic scaling, but you can override that and switch to zooming, at which point the, the bounds remain fixed, by pressing with your left mouse on a bit of space and then 
pulling to down and to the right and then you will get a zoom thing as before if you right click on the on the line and select move point your anchor point will start appearing there and then one can do the same here to unzoom you can either click on this button here or if you press on some space with the left mouse and then up and left it'll go back to um, the original thing and it'll also go back to automatic scaling so that's rough in um, there was also some options to take a uh, fixed uh, start point. So if you can choose to take uh, under here, you can under you can water cut a prediction start. You can rather than being a, a being totally free, you can choose to honour the last historical, and that has the effect of as we'll see it clearest on here on causing the curve to rotate round the run start which is this black uh, triangle so here now instead of it moving uh, the other anchor point being fixed now it's the black triangle that's fixed Another thing that we may want to do is to choose the other option, which is from not to have a constant gross liquid rate, but to have to fit independent curves to the oil rate decline and the uh, oil cut decline. So if we choose this option, we then, broadly speaking, have the freedom to move these two curves, and the end result will be a trend in the gross liquid rate. One important point to note is that the future doesn't allow you to have a uh, it doesn't allow you to say that we've gone to 100% water cut but we're still uh, producing oil still got a non-zero oil rate so the ultimate recovery of the uh, oil cut decline has to be greater or equal to the ultimate recovery of the uh, oil rate decline. So here for example under normal circumstances moving the oil rate decline it has no effect on uh, the water cut. Um, but if we start increasing it beyond the point, beyond the its ultimate recovery, beyond the ultimate recovery of the oil cut decline, then you'll see that that shifts in order to honour that behaviour. There is in fact an option here. You can choose to, instead of allowing the, this endpoint to be changed as necessary, you can choose to under tools options you can choose to um, by untaking this you, you can prevent the rate the oil rate curve moving the oil cut curve in which case what will happen is, is as follows when you try to drag the point it'll simply beyond a certain point it won't drag any further here I'm trying to drag it and you'll see it's fixed okay right so thank you for your attention that was a brief introduction to uh, the interactive decline analysis